Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Carnival stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Carnival is one of the world's largest travel companies with a combined fleet of over 100 vessels. Its portfolio consists of nine cruise lines. Carnival Cruise Line, Princess Cruises, Holland America Line, P&O Cruises in Australia, Seaborn, that's a luxury cruise line, Costa Cruises in Italy, Ada Cruises in Germany, P&O Cruises in the UK, and Cunard Cruises, also in the UK. The company is headquartered in Miami, Florida and was founded in 1972. It started trading in 87 and can be found on the New York Stock Exchange, Mexican Bolsa, Deutsche Bursa, London, and Sao Paulo Stock Exchange. It is part of the S&P 500 and FTSE 250 indices. 2020 was the worst year for cruise lines. The company was forced to pause operations in March 2020. It brought over 260,000 guests back home, repatriated 90,000 crew members, processed billions of dollars of guest refunds and cruise credits, accelerated the exit of 19 vessels, negotiated the delay of 16 ships on order, paused its entire fleet, and developed new cruise protocols. It extended debt maturities and secured financial covenant amendments, while completing financing transactions for $19 billion of new capital. The company was able to end 2020 with $9.5 billion of cash, which should be enough to get through 2021. This month, there was a Carnival cruise going from Texas to Belize, carrying 2,895 guests and 1,441 crew members. 96.5% of the passengers and 99.98% .98 of the crew were vaccinated. Even so, there was a COVID outbreak and 27 vaccinated people tested positive. All the people who tested positive had mild symptoms, though. The cruise industry has put a number of protocols in place which have been successful in 200 cruises during the second half of 2020. It does appear the cruise industry may be back to normal sometime this year or next. It is not possible to prevent everyone from getting sick on a cruise during COVID or prior to COVID. We just have to move on with our lives and not let the media dictate our actions. There was an interesting study done saying 74% of people who have been on cruises in the past said they plan to go on a cruise in the next few years. A whopping 58% of international travelers who have never been on a cruise before are likely to go on one in the next few years. Recently, Carnival Sunrise was a seven ship in its fleet to resume sailing since the cruise line first suspended operations in March 2020. The ship traveled from Miami to the Caribbean. So there is some positive momentum for cruise lines this year. They are still way below 2019 numbers, but it gives investors hope that are bullish on this industry. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 26.5 billion market cap. They're trading at $23 a share and they have 1.2 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they did have a lot of free cash flow in 2018, 1.8 billion. They didn't have too much in 2019 because they purchased a lot of ships that year. And of course they had a big negative in 2020 and the trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that looked really good in 18 and 19, really bad in 20 and the trailing 12 months. Sometimes free cash flow can look a little volatile because if you spend a lot of money one year buying buildings or equipment, it makes your numbers look really low. And the income statement is supposed to smooth out those numbers. So if you buy a building for $100 million, that expense is not put onto the income statement the year you bought it. It's spread out over the income statement over its useful life. That's called depreciation. The revenue is a sales for the company and that was really good in 2019, close to 21 billion. 2020 was really low. Most of their revenue came in the first quarter, pretty much no revenue the last three quarters of 2020. And they almost had no revenue in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. In the three months ended May 31st, they only generated $50 million in revenue. That's compared to $740 million from the prior period last year. It's even worse in the trailing six months. 
it was only 75 million in 2021, 5.5 billion in 2020. So they're pretty much getting no revenue at this point. Below revenue is a cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue give you your gross profit. And that did look good in 18 and 19, bad in 2020 and the trailing 12 months. Below that is operating expenses. And then below that is operating income. So even though they're not bringing in a lot of revenue, they still have some fixed costs. A lot of their employees are salaried, so they still have to continue paying them even though they're not operating their ships. If the company filed bankruptcy, they wouldn't have to pay their employees. But since they're an active business, they do have to pay them. They could, of course, fire their employees. That could be pretty risky because once they start operating their ships, they're going to need more employees. They added a lot of debt in 2020 and 2021, so they wouldn't be forced into bankruptcy. The interest payments on their debt went from $200 million to $1.5 billion. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which looks really bad in 2020 and the trailing 12 months. But it does look really good in 18 and 19. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash. Because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So as expected, their operating cash flow was really good in 18 and 19, but really bad in 2020 and the trailing 12 months. You can see they spend a lot on CapEx each year because those ships are pretty expensive. And they probably had agreements in place to purchase ships in 2020 that they couldn't get out of. So that's why they had CapEx in 2020. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they had a big negative in 2020, so they had to sell $3 billion of capital stock and issue $15 billion of debt. This is the equity section of their balance sheet, and they have $18 billion of equity. They raised $15 billion from issuing stock, and they profited $12 billion from running their business. That's pretty good. They still have positive retained earnings, even with the big negatives from COVID. They also bought back over $8 billion of stock. So just looking at the equity section, it does look like a pretty healthy business. But if nobody goes on a cruise ever again, then the business obviously can't move forward unless it changes what it does. But I don't think that's the case. I don't think cruises are over. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $18 billion of equity, $32 billion of debt. They're 36% equity, 64% debt. Their net debt is $23 billion, and their weighted average cost of capital is 9.07%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $47 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $27 billion. We divide that by 1.2 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $24. They're trading at $23, so they're trading at a 3% discount. It is a buy according to the model, but it's pretty close to where they're trading at. A year ago, I thought they would have positive free cash flow by 2022. But that doesn't look like that's going to happen. It definitely could happen, but I'm playing it safe and giving them negative free cash flow in 2022. I think the sweet spot is if they could generate $3 billion of free cash flow. And if they do that by 2024, I'm coming out with a stock price pretty much exactly where they're trading at. Simply Wall Street values the company at $27 a share. So they're saying it's 14% undervalued. 10 analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $30. This is where the stock has been trading since 87. So it looks like there were like three waves where it went up a lot at this point, came down, then went up a lot, came down, then went up a lot. And then with COVID, it came down a lot. It's come up a little bit, but it's still trading well below its pre-COVID highs. This is the stock price the last 52 weeks. So the stock did double from this point to this point, but it has regressed a bit. It's coming back down. It seems that investors were bullish that the company was sending ships out and doing some cruises. But the stock price probably got too high and people took in their profits and sold off. So the last time they paid a dividend was in February 2020. They paid 50 cents a share. I'm not sure when they're going to bring their dividend back. Possibly next year. But it could be until 2023. This is a really volatile stock. It has a beta of 2.3, so it moves more than two times the market. It's gone up 56% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 32%. The 52-week low was $12, the high was 32 And the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. And 31 million shares are traded on average the past three months. Of the 1.16 billion shares outstanding, 1 billion are on float. 53% are held by institutions. 
and it has a pretty high short percentage. Over 10% of shares on float are shorted. In the past year, the stock is up 50%, but it's down in the past three years and five years. Analysts are expecting their earnings to grow 72%, their revenue to grow 46%. I mean, it pretty much has to grow because it's so low at this point. You can't really go down. In the past five years, our annual earnings decreased 58%. In the past year, it decreased 200%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you would have been over $10,000 for the longest time until COVID hit, then you would have been below $10,000. Mickey Arison, the chairman of the board and the owner of the Miami Heat, owns 11% of the stock, then Vanguard, BlackRock, then the investment fund of Saudi Arabia, and last is BB&T Trust. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE because they have negative net income. They don't bring in much revenue, so they have a terrible price to sales ratio. They do have a really good price to book ratio because they did raise a lot of cash. They have a good current ratio and a good quick ratio. They have over $9 billion of cash on their balance sheet, so it does look like they can get through the next 12 months without doing more capital raises. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of six other companies in the same industry as Carnival. And if Carnival has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. Pretty much every company except Booking Holdings has negative earnings, so we can't look at the P.E. ratios. This company has the worst price to sales ratio. They're doing well in price to book and current ratio. They're doing bad in ROE. They're a little higher than average in debt. And they're almost exactly averaging market cap. To summarize, I have them trading at a 3% discount. It's really tough to figure out when this market will open up. I definitely think it will open up and the stock will go up, but it could take several years. There does seem to be a lot of positive signs. Lots of people are getting vaccinated. There are some cruise ships operating right now. And this is the biggest cruise line, so if you are bullish on this industry, this would be the best stock to buy. I rank their free cash flow as 1 out of 10, their revenue 1 out of 10, and their ratio of 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation, or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.